Hey, Stephen Young here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. Let's go back to 1970. You have $4,769 in your pocket. What do you do with it? Do you buy a Hemi Cuda or do you buy a 70 Newport convertible like this? Well, somebody bought this instead of the Hemi Cooter. The reality is the Hemi Cooter was about $200 less than this car's 4769 base price. Yeah, it's true. But here's the thing. In 1970, not everybody wanted a Cuda that got nine miles to the gallon, was loud, and really wasn't that much fun in day-to-day -day traffic. I mean, today, they're $500,000 cars or whatever people pay for them. Meanwhile, something like this Chrysler Newport convertible, well, here it is in the junkyard languishing. But this is a very rare car. You gotta remember that in 1970, there was the Imperial, which wasn't a Chrysler, there was the New Yorker, the 300, and then the Newport. If you wanted a convertible, you couldn't get it in an Imperial or a New Yorker. You had to get a 300 or a Newport to get the convertible body style. And in 1970, a total of 180,767 Chryslers were built in total, not Imperials, but Chryslers, full-size Chryslers. Of them, only 2,201 were convertible body styles. Very rare, right here, 2,201 convertibles in 1970 on the full-sized Chrysler platform. But again, here it is, the Newport being a base car, uh, but again, full-size automobile, the A body, the B body, the C body. That's what we've got right here, the full-size C body platform. And this one here, again, the trunk is massive on these things. Have a peek inside. And yeah, you know, it's, it's big. Somebody added this fur, this blue carpeting, this stuff right here. It's not factory, but again, the trunk on these things is huge. You could certainly get uh, three of your buddies into the drive-in movie with these things, with no problem. And getting back to the body style on this one, this is the second year for the fuselage body style. And fuselage, this is 1969, first year for the fuselage. And what does that mean? Well, basically, it comes down to the sides of the body sort of push out like a fuselage, you know, and here is the uh, the Newport lineup right here, available two-door, four-door, uh, and even, of course, convertibles. By contrast, the car that came before 1968 was not the fuselage. By contrast, part two, we can see the sides are fluted in, the opposite of the fuselage design for 69. So again, the same basic bones underneath these cars, but here's the 68 Newport. Again, final year for this styling cycle, and again, the fuselage arrived for 69 onward. Now, something interesting about the Imperial versus lesser Chrysler New Yorkers, 300s, and Newports is they took a, a specific wheel. Uh, these Newports, by the way, came standard with front drum brakes. You paid an extra 40 bucks or so for discs. This is one of the front drums off of this Newport. You can see that it's a pretty heavy cast iron structure with fins here and here. Heat sinks to make it nice and cool. Left hand lug nuts. This one came off, I believe, the driver's side, the left, the L. Yeah, there's a left and a right. 70 being one of the last years for the left and the right hand solid guns. But here's the thing. When it comes to the rim, on these things, a lot of people say that if you have a Newport or a Chrysler or an Imperial, the wheels are the same. Not true. Here's the thing. This wheel right here, let's do a little move around. Okay. This is the bolt pattern. This is the five on four and a half inch bolt pattern seen on Roadrunners, uh, Chargers, uh, full-size Chryslers, and of course, uh, the Newport. The wheel, this is a 15 inch wheel right here, and it goes right on. You can see that you can sort of mount it right up, and it sits on there real pretty and all is well. There we go, see all the lug nuts are cool, right? And here's the thing, this wheel takes a little hubcap if you want, but a lot of people make the mistake of grabbing an Imperial wheel, which looks about the same, you know, it's kind of the same, but if you look closely, the Imperial wheel does not have nubs for a hubcap, and it also has a solid center. It doesn't have the vents or the nubs, so the Imperial wheel is different, but even more importantly, the Imperial wheel has a different bolt pattern. It has a five on five, and you cannot use the Imperial wheel on the lesser Chrysler Newport. You can see right there, it's not the same. So if you see a steel wheel like this, run. It is a five on five Chrysler Imperial piece. No, it won't work on your New Yorker, Newport, 300, or even Roadrunner or Charger. Uh, it's strictly an Imperial only thing. They look the same, but they're not. We continue our little look around here. And on this side here, this has classic New England rust. I gotta say, in this area right here, look how much plastic filler there is right here. This thing here, now this right here, there would have been a seam here from the factory for sure, but it would not have been made out of Bondo. Look at that. My God. <laughs> 
somebody smoothed that crap on there. And this is not factory work. Again, this probably was hit or rusted at some point in time in this area right here. And this is the, uh, the handiwork of somebody who uh, didn't really care. Again, this was just a used car, and it still is. But again, only 2,201 drop top full-size Chrysler 300 and Newports are made in 1970. And again, this car right here, 200 bucks more expensive than a Hemi Cuda. Now this one does have the optional interior heater right here, the Hibachi heater right here, powered by coal, very economical and very uh, environmentally friendly, joking. But again, this one here is a semi-unitized construction as were all C-bodies. What do I mean by that? Well, the whole front, where'd it go? What happened? Well, on an A body or a B body, they were fully unitized. The inner fenders were welded, the radiator wall, the front frames, but on the full size C bodies, if you come around to the side here, Shane will see, there is no front frame because it bolts on. Under the seats forward, it's like a subframe. So these are semi-unitized. So this is not cut in half. Sony actually unbolted the front clip and took it away. The front clip, by the way, the sheet metal is right here. Here is the one piece Chrysler Newport fenders, etc. Somebody unceremoniously unbolted it and tossed it up there. Now the engine on this one, all Newports, in fact all Chrysler's in 1970 had big blocks. There were no slant sixes, no small blocks, although 1971 finally the 360 could be had at a Newport as people sought fuel economy. But the base engine in these is the L code, which is the 383 two barrel. You can see it right there, the L. That's the, uh, the 383 two barrel engine. No Hemis in these things, but for 68 bucks more, you could get the uh, 383 four barrel or for 164 bucks, the U-code 444 barrel. So you could actually get as much as a 444 barrel in one of these things. No six packs, no Hemis in the big C bodies, uh, but it was a, a possibility to get a 444 barrel, 350 horsepower in one of these things. But this one here, not sh yeah, not an air conditioning car. This was just a regular, no AC convertible, kind of an uncommon thing to get a convertible without air conditioning. Kind of interesting, you can see right here, it doesn't have the big box with the uh, air conditioning stuff inside. So again, the base price on this, $4,769. 200 bucks less than a Hemi Cuda. And again, only 2,200 rag tops, you know? And by 1973, I'm fairly sure these things were gone. Early 70s, the final years for full-size Chrysler convertibles. And here's one of the last of the breed right here, rotting away at Bernstein Auto Wrecking. Now the thing, this car probably was purchased by the, uh, the management here. They love full-size Chryslers. And back in the 80s, they buy every one of these things they could to use them for demolition derbies. Yeah, because these things are pretty rugged vehicles. You put it in reverse, you use the trunk as a battering ram, and you're usually the last man standing in the demo derby. Uh, it's possible the front clip was harvested for use under a, another demo derby car, and they saved the convertible body shell for some future purpose. But here it sits, here at Bernstein Auto Wrecking. So again, if you in 1970 were going to buy a car, would it be a Hemi Cooter or one of these? I think I know the answer. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel, the Junkyard Crawl channel, and give us a like, share this video with your friends, and ring the bell so you're aware of the next video, which happens tomorrow morning. Ah.